In the state of Florida, in the city of Delray Beach, there was a gym, World Gym, which would be the home of the Delray Misfits. These misfits, as the name suggests, aren't the typical kind of people you would generally see in life, excluding Florida of course. This peculiarity and strangeness has led to the combination of all of these people, leading to much hilarity, ments, and intrigue within the extremely long time the misfits have been around for, going on 10 years now. And that's not even including the years since Jason Genova started creating videos. The catalogue of misfits is quite large, and to make this video, you know, somewhat watchable, I've shortened this down quite a bit. But enough of this dilly dallying, let's actually get into the Delray Misfits. Let's start off with the person behind the Delray Misfits, and behind the camera. Andrew, also affectionately named Prince Andrew, no not that one, is the main person behind the actual Delray Misfits, recording them in the gym. He originally started out as Jason Genova's cameraman, however due to a falling out between the two of them, due to Jason being an idiot and giving his passwords out, Andrew distanced himself from Jason, deciding to highlight some of the other members of the gym namely Big Richard, Sol, Mike, and of course himself, and labelled this group as the Delray Misfits. Being the man behind the camera, as well as being one of the main men of reason within the Misfits, there isn't actually too many outrageous moments he's directly been a part of, despite being present for most moments during everything he's filmed. So sadly, there's not much I can specifically say about him, except that he was in the music video for Fatboy Slim's Out of My Mind. Look, there he is. I think. But that that's about it, so let's move on to another starting member. Sol is another one of the original members of the Misfits, and is also the eldest being in his early 80s at the start of the Delray Misfits. With his age comes a lot of wisdom, making him very polite and innocent, being the most gentle misfit of them all by far, despite actually being in combat in the Korean War, and as well as having a wife who according to Big Richard was suffering from dementia, which of course would be a stressful period in your life. Oftentimes when Sol would come to the gym, he wouldn't actually work out and would just come and say hello to Andrew and the other misfits. But when Sol did actually come in to work out, he was notorious for training the same two things, shoulders and chest, starting every time with lat pull downs. Many of Sol's appearances would also consist of him promoting his granddaughter, Candice Lee, a singer who of course he was proud of and Andrew was absolutely happy to help him do so linking her channel in the description of his videos where he mentioned her. Sadly, this is a bit of a brief section about Sol because for a large portion of the Delray Misfits, he wasn't actually around, leaving around 2014 to train at Planet Fitness until his return in 2015 for another brief period before he moved back to New Jersey where he would film two videos for the Delray Misfits channel. Hi, Sol, I'm alive and well. I'm doing my best to stay alive. I don't know, I miss all you guys. I keep going to the gym and pump iron. I keep pumping, don't stop. I miss all you guys. I hope everything is okay with everybody there. I miss you all, I love you all. I hope to see you soon. This is my lovely granddaughter, Candace Lee. I follow her on the YouTube and the, and the Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, Instagram and, and, and keep, in, keep in touch with her <laughs> and share for her and her music and singing. Love her very much. Hope one day she'll be on TV. You can find me at Candice Lee Music. <laughs> Candice Lee Music. Hi everybody. It's my granddaughter Candice, an all-star singer in Florida. Do you still live in Florida? No, I don't live in Florida anymore. Those days are gone. Are you still training? No, I'm not training anymore. I'm not, not in good shape. Do you still see the misfits? I, I miss them all. Lenny, Andrew, Jason, Rich. I always wonder what's going on. I always think about them. And I appreciate them thinking about me. I miss them all. Do you think Jason will ever get shredded? No, he didn't get shredded. He's not going to get shredded. Why not? He loves himself too much. What do you miss most about Florida? I miss my wife very much. Me too. I know everybody misses her. We loved everything that we did. Mm -hmm. We enjoyed 
going out with other people. We yeah, have friends. People that like us, we like them. <laughs> so would sadly pass away in the morning of September the 4th, 2022, at 90 years old. Initially, when doing my first bits of research on the Misfits, when looking at videos of Big Lenny, Chuck was someone whose presence confused me, as in my opinion, he's probably the most average guy who appears in the videos. Coming into the gym to work out, but not being extremely dedicated, eating essentially whatever he likes. However, throughout watching a lot of these videos again, I've actually come to appreciate Chuck quite a bit due to his longevity and consistency, being at least to me, a surprisingly important figure in the Misfits appearing probably the second most in the world gym era of the Misfits. Chuck was also not initially filmed by Andrew, with him and Brad not being considered Misfits at this point, until viewers requested to show them more often. Also, quick fun fact, Brad and Chuck were originally confused by viewers, not being able to tell them apart according to Chuck, which I, I don't really get. With Chuck being filmed more often by Andrew, we'd get to see perhaps his biggest peculiarity, his tendency to count up his workouts, with Andrew calling Chuck Rain Man as a result of it, as he'll add up how much weight he's lifted in a workout, with him one time tallying £45,000 in episode 25. This is to be expected due to him doing marathons, typically with Caesar, who we'll get onto later, where they'll race until they've both done 200 reps of a certain weight, doing this with £135 in episode 26. Other good moments include Chuck getting trapped in a calf machine due to him liking to put as many plates on as possible, is it or is it not true that yesterday you almost got stuck on this machine? Hell yeah, man. Had five plates on. Do, do tell what happened. Did you, someone almost had to come rescue you on the calf machine? I had five plates, I almost locked my legs underneath it, did two and a half reps, almost cramped up and tapped out. I was done. Caffeine pills were It's, it's not going to happen yeah. today with two plates, is it? Oh, uh, it still might. <laughs> now, if I, was doing, if I was doing this, if you had one 25 pound plate on there, I would probably get stuck. It's all about getting stuck, man. Can't, if you ain't trying hard enough, wait, shit. I'm fucking up on this. <laughs> if you don't fail, you ain't trying hard enough. Another good moment is when Chuck received a few compliments from a commenter named Jared, leaving Andrew slightly envious. Now, Chuck, this was left on uh, yeah, your YouTube yeah. channel. May I read it? Yeah, I don't care, dude. I laugh. My so hard. dick gets hard every time I imagine myself <laughs> sucking on your dick. <laughs> as you are pressing dumbbells or barbells. I would suck you so good. How come no one leaves me comments like this? <laughs> I would suck you. Oh, Jared, oh, it's a guy, too bad. Uh, yeah, trust yeah. me, dude. I wish best, it was a best, female. <laughs> best feeling you ever had. I'd get it so wet and deep throat. I just get called a douchebag. No one ever, no one ever wants no. to suck my dick on YouTube. That was the other one. I was like, oh my god, I'm like, I was dying laughing last night. I wish I could suck on your <laughs> cock while you bench press. I gotta find time to delete. Where are these people? Why don't they come here and make me these kinds of offers? They're spawning off of him. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they're mistaking you for Brad again, and they really want to blow Brad. However, in 2015, Chuck seemed to change a little bit, not really being as upbeat, and now gaining an addiction. It's a bit of a weird one, so I'll give you a couple seconds to guess. Clash of Clans. It's a bit of a weird one, but yeah, his workouts were drastically slow, instead choosing to play Clash of Clans instead of, well, anything really. Now, I've been quite jokey here, but it kind of looks like this is for a real reason, with Chuck mentioning that he's burned out, leading Andrew to inquire as to when he's actually last had a break, to which Chuck solemnly replies, my stepdad's funeral. To which Jason has a bit of a reaction to. Well, we have ourselves, we, we have a critic. It works for me, it depends on the individual. Some people you know, get are more immune to it. Oh, I feel the caffeine in it, that much I feel. I'm saying mentally. Why are you not with us, Martin? Why? Yeah. I'm burnt out of everything, dude. You don't sleep? I'm burnt out of everything. I'm burnt out of life. I'm burnt out of work. I'm that burnt out of working out. Socks, balls. Going through the motions. When you can live a relaxed life being a Chuck. millionaire, rich of the famous, life in the rich yeah. and famous. Like you, right? Yeah. Sickening. Sickening. Chuck, when's the last time you took a good vacation? <laughs> Two years ago. How many years ago? Two. Where'd you go? Stepdad's funeral. <laughs> that was my vacation. This guy laughs. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> It's not a freaking vacation, it's a freaking business trip. <laughs> oh yeah, that's one way of putting it, Jason. 
It's kind of boring if you get drunk. No. Chuck, you need you, seriously. You, you know the Bahamas are right here, brother. Take you should go there for a few Christmas days. This time I got a week and a half off. All right, you take definitely it. need I'll a vacation. Take a <laughs> take a trip to the uh, Bermuda Triangle. The Bermuda Triangle? <laughs> yeah, get sucked in by by the sink your ship and get sucked into the. I'm Bermuda already sucked Triangle. into this shit. <laughs> yeah, he's sucked into the Delray Misfit Triangle. For life. For good. <laughs> Poor Chuck. Forever. Despite this complete apathy for working out and his new love for Clash of Clans, he still managed to work out more than Jason in the gym. Which isn't really an accomplishment to be fair, it just shows that Jason doesn't work out. The most recent update we have regarding Chuck, who seemed to disappear after the closing of World Gym, is from Brad's 4th of July stream, where he talked about how he still sees Chuck regularly, although it doesn't really expand on this further. Let's talk about Brad, who is one of the most significant Derry misfits, having kind of a similar role to Andrew at points, sometimes filming, as well as being a voice of reason for some of the misfits. However, unlike Andrew, Brad really doesn't pull any punches, instead likely being the biggest aggressor in all of the misfits, particularly towards Jason, which would give him the nicknames such as the Big Brad Wolf and Male Prick, due to him being a mailman and, you know, a prick. Brad has appeared since the second episode of The Dowry Misfits, where Brad would insult Jason and laugh at his antics, although only to Andrew, as he would try to avoid Jason due to both his odour and his usual Jason ways. However, this made Brad quite an unpopular character in The Misfits, which of course did not bother him in the slightest. A big changing point with this dynamic was during a t-shirt contest, where Andrew ran a contest for the viewers where they could win a shirt with all the Dowry Misfits of the time signatures on. This would be fine, however Brad inspected Jason's signature and noticed something was a bit off with it. Come here, you there's, Jason, there's Jason and now we're, now we're going to get Brad to sign it. You didn't wear, you didn't wear, the, you didn't wear this shirt, did you? Uh, oh good. Well I was thinking that I, I we could smear it. it all over Jason's body so the winner can sort of get a glimpse of what we have to go through every Where's morning. Where's your signature? Me, I'm right here. Yours. Adam. Where's yours? Uh, right here. The goof hands. You're sweating today. That's good. You're working out. What does it say, Jason? Come here. It says sickening, man getter, man motion. Something. <laughs> man motion. You can barely. Where do you see man? Uh, Jason. What is it? Man mo. Man. It's like Egyptian hieroglyphics. Yes. Get. What is that? DSL. Sick. DSL? What is DSL? Dark Lord Spaniard. Do you know what DSL really stands for? What? Dick sucking lips. <laughs> fucking queer. You are a total homo. I knew it. I fucking knew it. <laughs> Another important part about Brad is his politics. Now, normally this wouldn't be a notable thing to say in one of my videos, as for the most part, this doesn't really matter. However, one thing about the Misfits is that they are quite political, especially during the 2016 election, and the common consensus between the Misfits is that they are all right-leaning, tending to side with Trump on matters. The odd one out with this is of course Brad, who is left-wing. This, in combination with his tendency to be an aggressor, led to a lot of name-calling, mostly towards Trump, which would cause numerous minor fights with the Misfits. More recently, Brad has created his own gym, which created a brief uptick in content due to the Misfits having somewhere to convene, as World Gym had closed down, and other gyms weren't as good to film in. Brad's gym and house would be called Bradford Manor. However, sadly this would not last long, which I believe is due to a falling out between Brad and Jay, as well as minor conflicts between Brad and Lenny. Jay got banned from Bradford Manor by saying something disparaging regarding one of Brad's children, with them no longer talking to one another. Lenny constantly makes videos on his own channel regarding Brad for attention, and doesn't come down to Brad's house to record, with Brad being sick of having to facilitate things. Because of this, video production from Brad's side has seemed to cease, although he will do the occasional Instagram live. Something you may have noticed so far is a lack of women, although this is not for a lack of trying, as Andrew gave a woman named Bubbles a bit of screen time during episode 20, however she did very little. Saying that is an understatement considering most of the time she did very little, with the few things involving her consisting of Big Richard stating that she's carrying his baby, as well as going on a long boring tangent about how she was writing a show similar to the Diary of Misfits, which in turn gave her the nickname Bubbles. This would mark the end of her appearances for a couple of months as she requested not to be seen on camera, although apparently completely forgot about this and began appearing again where she would just flex on camera for some reason. However, her last major appearance was truly a sad one, as it would coincide with a great loss for the Misfits, which we'll get onto later. 
Unlike Bubbles, there are a couple of women who do actually have things of interest in videos and just their general personality, with the first one we'll talk about being Emma. Emma's first appearance was at the start of 2016 in episode 112, where she came in with a bang, showing off some of her high kicks as well as slapping Lenny, something which he obviously enjoyed. I can kick really hard. I can kick she just said she can kick really hard too. And kick high. High, she said. Let's see. Well, she do that again. Oh boy. That would have got your face. Look at this girl. You're in trouble, Lenny. Kick like Genova. What is he doing over there? <laughs> what do you mean it's not going to be that hard? I liked your attitude before. Now I'm. Uh, you're, I mean, you're, you're losing me, Emma. Go there as hard as you can. I'm going to be able to do a set. Okay, ready? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the next notable appearance is in the first part of episode 113, where an idea is raised for Big Lenny to drink a woman's urine, something he had claimed he wanted to do as it would help him work out. Luckily, they had Emma, a woman who was more than happy to oblige as surprisingly, she is adept at pissing, being able to release a stream every 20 minutes due to having been on probation so many times in the past. Sadly, despite her being so willing to show off her water talents, Lenny refused to drink piss, as he often tends to lie, and just didn't do it, so we've missed out. Debatably. Following on from this minor attempted piss escapade, Emma exhibited further deviancy, this time through the gym equipment itself. This stems from the fact that she constantly thinks about how to have sex on all the machines in the gym, even away from the misfits. This was just a great avenue for her to show off her thoughts, I suppose, although saying thoughts may be a stretch, due to her demonstrating on camera how some of them should be used. She also allowed Jason to actually touch a woman somewhat intimately, letting him touch her ass while he was spotting her, which is probably the bravest move that has ever been caught on camera. Yeah, I'm doing donkey punch, yeah. Uh-huh. Where I'm, uh, I think it's, maybe it's up one here. Okay. Just leaning over here. I think I'm down farther. Emma, you need help? And, why don't you just do? Why don't you make? Why don't you make your life a lot easier and just do standing calf raises over there? I don't like doing those. I put, and put it on my lower back. <laughs> See, nobody would push it. Uh -huh. right now, you know? Oh boy! <laughs> oh boy! Yeah. Oh boy! Oh boy! It's a lot better when it's a real woman, isn't it, yes, Jason? Yes, it's beautiful. <laughs> uh, it's beautiful. Look at this. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. Can I tap it? <laughs> Smack it, Jay. And a boy. There you go. Sadly, Emma would be a short lived member of the Misfits due to her unfortunate timing with her appearing in videos shortly before the closing of World Gym, which seems to be the heart of the Diary Misfits themselves. She would continue making appearances, however, these would be of relatively little note, such as going on the trip with the Misfits to Vegas where she would talk a bit about her addiction, still stating that she's an addict because it's a constant struggle, which is actually a decent point. Now, I'm sure that this was a little bit of a bummer, so I'm sure you'll all be delighted to know that yes, actually she did get hooked back on meth, firstly in 2017, which she denied and claimed that she fell asleep on her legs, and more recently in 2020, where she has made some videos, which, in all honesty, I'm just not gonna show, because they're kinda sad and don't add much. She just mumbles about being robbed. Keeping it on the women of the Delray Misfits for now, we'll talk about Jennifer, another one of the less out there people of the Misfits, being under the straight man of the group. Jennifer would spend most of her time working at the front desk of World Gym. However, because of this she would often have to deal with Jason's antics, such as with the body fat testing machine that he was addicted to at one point. Jennifer's appearances would be brief, with her only tending to be annoyed with Jason at points as well as leaving World Gym, although only technically. She would still work out there, but she was no longer actually working there. The only real quote unquote saga involving Jennifer was during the whole hype of the ice bucket challenge, in which Jennifer was a perfect participant due to her attractiveness. While she would agree to taking part in this, it wouldn't actually happen for a long time due to Jennifer delaying it, with it finally taking place on the 100th episode of the Dairy Misfits with a bronze Jason having the honours of pouring the water under her. Happy episode 100. What? Happy episode 100, everybody. Okay. All right, this has been months and months and months in the making. 
where Jennifer said Happy she was going to do the ice bucket episode. challenge. Even Jason did it. Jennifer? You ready? Yeah. Enjoy. Oh, God. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is a bucket hole. Holy shit. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> so what's your tits? <laughs> <laughs> So a couple questions you may currently have are regarding the fitness and strength of the misfits, such as who is the fittest misfit and who is the strongest misfit. Let's start off with the fittest misfit, with this being Will. Will is truly a marvel of a man, having by far the best physique, despite likely having one of the worst diets, drinking Starbucks coffee every day and eating a lot. Being surprisingly old at 38 years of age despite how he looks at the end of 2013 and having strange workout techniques deciding to do partial reps rather than full reps. These reps, as well as jogging over 10 miles every Saturday, seem to create this crazy form, with Andrew instantly classifying Will as a misfit upon his first appearance in episode 16, an honour not awarded to Brad or Chuck at this time. Because of Will's physique, Andrew was eager to have him pose off against other members of the misfits, specifically Jason, although of course because of his fragile ego he was reluctant, although it did manage to happen. We have something going on that everyone's been asking for. The epic Jason versus Will pose down. <laughs> this is going to be so epic, we're going to put this on both of our channels here. Jason's and mine, look at this. Well, why don't you guys hit the same poses at the same time? We can do a little comparison. Let's see what we got here. Jason lost. Will was also matched up to pose off with Sol, with this one being a little bit closer than the one with Jason. There doesn't seem to be much Will post 2014, with the only update being that Brad has seen him. We've talked about the misfit with the best physique, but let's talk about the misfit with the most strength, with this being Jay Masters, also known as the Motor City Madman, the Motor City Moron, and the Bedroom Bully. Jay would be very well deserving of his own video, and I'm sure his section will be by far the longest part of this video. However, Jay joined the Misfits at a very bad time, debuting on episode 94 of the Misfits, with his first ever words on video being cuckolding, which, to be fair, is as great an introduction to Jay as any. But because it was so late within the Delray Misfits, there isn't as much content as other people. Jay is a power lifter, with one of his heaviest chest presses being 500 pounds, with this being in his late 40s for a competition, and one that he found surprisingly easy. These lifts do evidently take a toll on Jay, with lifts either causing him to throw up, to which he had a designated sick bucket, or would cause his head to bleed, and even turn his head blue. Best all ever. You, all you. Seriously, that's all time? Yeah. That was beautiful. Check out the back of the neck, the blood running. Yeah, yeah, look at that blood flow. Wait, why is the back yeah. of your head bleeding? Woo! <laughs> ah. Do you like pop a blood vessel or something, or did you hit your head? My lower back's all locked up. That's because you're on. I need help getting my belt off. The main part about Jay is his degeneracy, with him being really, really degenerate. With me not being able to say too much about this, I will just let Jay speak for himself. Yeah, I've got bigger tits than Jennifer, according to our fans. I would agree on that, though. More, more suckable, too. I really don't like my tits played with. Put a finger in the butt while I'm getting some head doesn't oh, hurt. All right, I'm going to go back to working out now, guys. Thumb in the bum will make you come. <laughs> you should write a you should write a children's book. I had a chick one time sucking my cock. And she started tossing my salad. And she was keeping me hard with her hand. So then she goes back to sucking my cock. She starts fingering my ass. Yeah, I made a reference to this many episodes ago. <laughs> so I caught a lot of shit for it too. She's fingering my ass while she's sucking my cock. And I'm down with it. Well, it's sort of a rusty trombone. A rusty yeah. trombone is a tongue in the ass. But this, this filthy whore went back to my ass after she had broken the seal with her finger, which is taboo. If you're going to toss salad, you, 
you you got to quit after you break the seal. It's like going ass to mouth. Yeah. yeah you See, can't do that. the asshole is the self-cleansing <laughs> unit. The center of the asshole is the cleanest part. All the filth is pushed to the sides. So if a finger is inserted and you break the seal, the asshole will start self-cleansing itself. So you can't get your mouth down there. If I had to choose between getting fucked in the ass and a dick in my mouth, I'm getting fucked in the ass. I'd let a snake suck my dick in a rock pile, I think. I mean, a, a blowjob doesn't even count. Actually, I would like to see a dog eat my cum out of a woman's pussy. That would make me happy. Oh my fucking god. Lick up the cream pie? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Also, he doesn't brush his teeth. Jay also has a little bit of an alcohol problem, which is summarised in this quote from him where he said, I very rarely drink two days in a row, because I don't like to drink when I'm sick, and I usually drink until I'm ill. The funniest result of this alcohol problem is during a video of a Halloween party where he decided to dress up as OJ Simpson carrying a machete, turning up already completely blitzed. Two very notable events managed to occur during this party. The first of these is that Jay was extremely worked up and gained a very strong interest in Jane, Jason's mother, with him sucking her toes which both he and Jane very much enjoyed. The second incident also came from Jay being worked up, with him enjoying how big Lenny was looking, requesting him to bend over, into which a huge conflict almost occurred, with Lenny telling Jay to take this outside, with the two of them having a long standoff, all whilst Jane bobs for apples. Lenny, bend over, let me spank you for camera. <laughs> I didn't, it wasn't a question, it was a command. It's a command, huh? Andrew. Yeah. Want to see me spank Lenny? Well, Jay, That'll be great. Bend over. You gonna make me? Bend over. Okay, you want to touch me? Let's go outside. Hey, not in the house. Let's go outside. Uh oh. Don't do it in the house. I have stems on you too. Meanwhile, she's still dunking her head in the fucking water. These two guys are going to be beating the shit out of each other right here, and she's still going to be bobbing for the apple. Jay was no longer allowed to any more of Jane's Halloween parties. Yes, despite all the toe sucking. Recently, as I mentioned earlier, Brad has cut all ties with Jay due to him making comments about his children, so you're unlikely to see anything between the two of them. However, he has still been filming with Andrew. On a positive note, maybe, Jay seems to be trying to be at least a little bit healthier, cutting down on his drinking and on his weight, recently mentioning that he's dropped down to 290 pounds. Some of you may be wondering who my personal favourite misfit is, and this is a hard question because there are of course too many greats to choose from. However, there is one that stands above all of them, and this is a man who goes by many names, such as Mystery Man and Steve Martin look alike. His appearances would be brief, but oh boy would they be complete gold, appearing rarely and suddenly, just being a bit strange. The best practice of prison workout so far is, um, it was actually very creative. They incorporated use of a television. Whoa, 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 whoa. I gotta stop yeah, filming. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we can't yeah. give anybody any ideas. Oh. No, not even uh. that, not even that. <laughs> yeah, I see you, you Hey, this guy. And now he come up with some <laughs> new idea for me. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> The mystery man. The mystery man. <laughs> <laughs> I got him. We're not done yet, everybody. I got one more person I have to film. One more person. Here we go. Dun 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 dun. Dun 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 dun. Let's see it. Come on. Take his video. Let's see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Hello. Yes. How are you? Morning. I'm good. How are you? Good. Fine. How are you? I'm excellent. <laughs> Unfortunately, he would be a candle that shines twice as bright. With him being a snowbird, 
and leaving after episode 47 of the Delray Misfits, causing a huge controversy, revealing that his name is Ross, taking away some of the aura of the mystery man. You're gonna do it? It's Ross was high. No, Ross didn't get back yet, leaving 415. <laughs> Who's that, this guy? Yeah, because everybody asked me, as soon as they said, everybody. His name is I, Ross? Yeah. No, I, no, no, it's a joke. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want to know his name. His name is Joe Schmo. <laughs> that just takes all the mystery out of it. Oh. I wanted him to just be mystery man. I'm gonna have mystery to like. Mystery man. <laughs> you ever see Men in Black when they shine that white light in your face and you forget everything for a minute? Yeah. That's what I need because I don't want to know his name. Good for you. Oh. Good for you. So put blank. Put <laughs> blank. <laughs> blank. You're the blank man. <laughs> hey, he looks like. <laughs> I look like who? Nah. <laughs> Good to see he you. Like All right. Yeah, no, People no. say he looks like Steve Martin. I he does. That's, true. that's what people say on, on YouTube. Oh, he's taller. If, if, but you know yeah. what? Did you really? Yeah. yeah. But if you see Steve Martin, Steve Martin doesn't look like him, but he looks like Steve Martin. I get it. Todd is a bit of a weird one, because in reality, he's not really a misfit, considering none of the viewers liked him, nor considered him a misfit, and neither did any of the misfits. Basically, he's in this video because he made a lot of noise in the brief time he would appear in the videos. Todd would appear essentially out of nowhere during one of the many times Jason would weigh himself, with Todd making fun of Jason for, well, basically just Jason things. This, however, would not be taken quite as well as when everyone else does it, with people not seeing it as well-intentioned like the rest of the misfits, and instead quite mean-spirited, as well as the fact he didn't seem like the sharpest knife in the drawer. Despite the perception of Todd and his brief appearances at this time, he was recorded as part of a documentary being filmed about Jason, with him being allowed his own segment, where he does actually speak positively about Jason. Well, working out in the gym here in the morning, you, know, you get to see people working around and people having fun, and I'm a, I like to have fun. So when I seen Jason and he was up for abuse, <laughs> I had to do it, you know. <laughs> but we have a good time together. You know, yeah. good, good kid, works hard at what he does, and. Jason's a, Jason's a good sport. He always has good been. Sport. Yeah, he oh. took the joke real well. I took the joke like a champ. This would not actually help Todd with his perception though, with him still being hated by, well, everyone, with him managing to get Order 66 to buy the Misfits, which didn't really deter him for a while, constantly trying to get on camera, which just led Andrew constantly trying to avoid him, as well as just telling him to fuck off. He was officially cut off when Jason Order 66 him too, which was the last time I can find that anyone has even bothered to mention Todd. There are a few more people that are classified as misfits, however there isn't too much to talk about in detail with the rest of these, so the next few people are going to be kind of quickfire, just for finality, as they do deserve to be mentioned, and do of course add to the videos they appear in, it's just that they're not as misfitty as some of the rest of them. JT is a man who does very complex workouts, and this of course shows. He's also very happy to try and teach some of the misfits some of these exercises, including Andrew, Will, Jason and Brad's son. Although out of all these people, only Will was able to continue these exercises. Sean is an extremely long running member of the misfits, yet despite this, he never really does anything in the videos he appears in. He is also notable for always wearing his visor, with me only finding one instance of him not actually wearing it here in episode 30. The most notable thing that Sean has ever done is show a picture of a naked girl that he once had sex with on camera, which Andrew never edited out and is still up to this day surprisingly, although obviously I can't show it. Mark is another long-standing member of the Misfits, although has a bit more significance than Sean, although this isn't really saying much, he'll just add more in general conversations. He's also extremely notable for his huge arms, which has led to the nickname Synthol Mark. There are two Andrews within the Dairy Misfits, the cameraman, Andrew, who I've obviously talked about, and Coat Andrew, named for being a coach, although named after the Genovaism, which is typical for the Misfits. Coat Andrew was another World Gym employee, and was genuinely an extremely friendly guy, being happy to help people within the gym, even people like Jason, who nobody else can stand, and not to get annoyed when Jason doesn't give him absolutely anything in return. Old Chuck, not to be confused with Chuck, is debatably a member of the Misfits, although there isn't really much he did. The only thing I have of him is being upset with Brad's workout ethic. Hey, what's up? He's got a plate and a, and a, and a quarter on there. Come on, man. 
I start with three plates, I can do that 20 fucking times. Give me a fucking break already. Must be that, must be from carrying them letters, man. He thinks he's lifting a lot of weight. <laughs> Sadly, old Chuck has since passed away a few years back. Liz is another failed attempted female misfit, with her having multiple appearances, although they were not at all notable. Fun fact, when talking about the making of this video with people, I forgot her name was Liz, and was calling her Meg. Caesar is also not very notable. He often appears within videos, but never really talks to the camera, nor does he do anything really crazy. The most notable things he's done are the bench press marathon with Chuck, as well as teabagging him in a later episode. What the hell's going on over here? I think Caesar just teabagged him. It says I was, it says I was what? And Chuck, Chuck's what? laughing, I don't I know. Was, I almost Chuck lost my it. balance on the bench, man, I almost <laughs> fell. <laughs> It says I was what? You got a cock meat sandwich. It says I was, it says I was what? Caesar does still kind of pay attention to the misfits, despite not appearing for years, coming in live stream chats that the odd misfits create. This is all of the misfits that I'm going to cover in this video. Some of you may now realise that not every misfit has been covered, with a couple notable ones being missed out, as well as some possible others. Now, this is for two reasons. Some of the misfits will be covered in future videos, as they are too interesting just to be shoved into this one video, as it would become needlessly long. For any others that I've possibly missed, that's just because they're too boring to add, with the fact that I didn't even notice them in the first place to even add them. If there is anyone that's not obvious that you think I've missed, please let me know in the comment section below. Anyway, thank you all for watching this video, hope you enjoyed, and maybe I'll see you next time.